Hi, my name is Rosana Navarrete Verduga. I'm a student at Catholic University. I am going to talk to you about vitamin K treatment duration in patients with brodifacon poisoning. Definition. The redentices are agriculturally and domestically used substance used for the control of rats and other rodents, easily available on the market. The redentices brodifacone a long active vitamin K exit cycle antagonist can produce life threatening hemorrhage in exposed humans. Its toxic effects are treated with vitamin K, but monitoring such therapy is difficult. You may be taking warfarin if you're at risk of a stroke or have heart valve disease or atrial fibrillation, AF for short. Warfarin is an anticoagulant, which is known as a blood thinner. This is because it makes your blood less likely to clot and cause life-threatening blockages in your blood vessels, such as a stroke or a clot that has traveled to the lung. For a blood clot to form, you need vitamin K. This is produced by the liver and makes blood cells and platelets stick together and form a seal. Warfarin works by interfering with the production of vitamin K. This means blood cells don't stick together as quickly, reducing the risk of life-threatening clots forming. If you receive a hard blow or deep cut to your body, you may notice that you'll bruise more easily and that it will take longer for a cut to stop bleeding. Before you stop or change any medication, even if you're worried about side effects, talk to your GP first, as changing or missing a dose could harm your health. For more information about warfarin, visit bhf.org.uk slash warfarin. Applications in medicine. Anticoagulant Radiantesis have a similar mechanism of action than that of warfarin, but their potency is bigger. The spectrum of clinical manifestations of radiantesis intoxication is broad, and it varies from asymptomatic cases of hemorrhage that compromise the patient's life. Treatment is based on active Bleeding control and reposition of its logical antidote, vitamin K, in order to restore hemostasis. Welcome to USMLEFastTrack.com. The section we're going to talk about today is from First Aid for the USMLE Step 1, 2013 edition. Page 348. Coagulation Cascade Components. Procoagulation. What enzyme helps the conversion of oxidized vitamin K to reduced vitamin K? The enzyme that helps the conversion of oxidized vitamin K to reduced vitamin K is epoxide reductase. Why is vitamin K important in coagulation? The reason vitamin K is important is because it serves as a cofactor in the conversion of a lot of precursor clotting factors to their mature form, such as clotting factor 2, 7, 9, and 10, as well as protein C and S. So what would happen if a person has vitamin K deficiency? In case of vitamin K deficiency, it would lead to a decrease in synthesis of factor 2, 7, 9, 10, as well as protein C and S. What drug inhibits the enzyme epoxide reductase? Epoxide reductase is inhibited by the drug warfarin. One additional thing to note here is that neonates lack enteric bacteria, which produce vitamin K. So because of this, neonates are required for vitamin K supplementation at time of birth. One additional side note here is that one Willebrand factor is what carries and protects factor A. For more information on this topic, click on the link in the description section below. For a full USMLE Step 1 review, be sure to check us out at usmlefasttrack.com 
where we help you review the entire first aid for the USMLE Step 1 with high-quality videos and hundreds of detailed pictures for a better understanding of the material. So to learn from the best USMLE review book, be sure to check us out at usmlefasttrack.com. Pros and cons. Pros. The redundancies are substances that are used in agriculture and at the house to control the presence of rats, rodents, and other small animals. Cons. It is highlight populations in human beings. Among the characteristics of redundancies, poisoning it is known that most occur in children and women. In children, Poisoning are usually accidental. Although in adults, the majority are suicide attempts, and attempts are homicide shall not be ruled out. Oftentimes, despite your best efforts at hiding rat and mice, baits are under home, pets can still get into them. So it's important to know what to do if you believe that your pet has acquired toxicosis. Rat and mice baits both contain a common toxin called warfarin. And warfarin is an anticoagulant that prevents the body from forming clots. So what happens is the animals don't have any symptoms immediately. Even mice and rats don't have symptoms immediately. This bait is put in a palatable grain, and mice and rats are pretty keen into sensing if there could be a problem with the food. So it doesn't taste bad. They eat small amounts of this poison, and then they don't die immediately. The mice and rats wander off, and 24 to 48 hours later, warfarin inhibits clotting ability in their body, so they end up bleeding out. Because the mice and rats have wandered off, you typically don't find them directly in front of where the bait was. They go off and die somewhere else. Well, the exact same thing can happen with your pets. If your pets consume bait that contains warfarin, your dogs and cats initially don't have any symptoms, and this is where part of the frustration and overwhelming sadness can come about. Your pets don't throw up. They don't act sick. In fact, oftentimes you don't even know that they've consumed warfarin. Some of the symptoms that can come about if your pets have consumed warfarin as a toxicosis can be pale gums, uh, bleeding from the nose, bleeding from the um, GI tract, which can cause blood in the urine or blood in the feces. Sometimes animals can bleed out into their abdomen so they have a swollen belly. But just lethargy, weakness, the animals can appear, can appear overwhelmingly tired. They're not some really clear-cut symptoms. So that can lead people to believe, well, you know, my dog or cat's just having a day under the weather. Everything's going to be fine when, in fact, oftentimes they're in the process of dying. Issue applied in Ecuador. In Ecuador, during 2018, they reported a total of 2,113 cases of toxic effects, of which 425 cases are pesticide poisoning. The population between 20 to 49 years is the most affected by these events. The Ministry of Public Health has the Toxicology Information and Advice Center. It is a specialist search that provides telephone support for the proper management of poisoning to a health facility in an uninterrupted manner, allowing the development of action for prevention investigation of the most frequent intoxications and protection of health against pollutions to toxic agents. This is warfarin, one of the world's most widely prescribed drugs. It's an anticoagulant which inhibits blood from clotting and is used to prevent and treat stroke, heart attacks and deep vein thrombosis. So it's a pretty big deal. And it all started with some moldy hay and a load of dead cows. The story begins in the Midwest USA. During the 1920s, dairy farmers were losing cow after cow to a strange disease that caused their cattle to bleed to death. Vets soon identified the culprit, a crop in the cattle feed called sweet clover. If it was left to go moldy and fed to cows, it seemed to make them sick, but no one knew why. 
Unfortunately, few could afford alternative feeds. And so, in the winter of 1933, one desperate farmer, Ed Carlson, made a 200-mile journey to the University of Wisconsin in search of help. In the back of his truck were 100 pounds of sweet clover and a milk can full of blood that wouldn't clot. Oh, and a dead cow. Eventually, he stumbled upon a biochemist called Carl Link and made a plea for help, although there was nothing Link could do for Carlson's cows. But this chance meeting would have a profound effect on Link, and he soon set his team on the hunt for the chemical responsible for the sweet clover disease. After seven years of research, they found it, a compound called dicumerol which inhibited blood clotting in a number of animals such as mice and rabbits. In fact, one variant was so potent in rats that they developed it into a rat poison and called it warfarin. Unfortunately for rats, it became one of the most popular rodenticides on the market. Soon, research showed that warfarin could be used safely in humans, but few doctors wanted to prescribe a rat poison. So, when it was approved for clinical use in 1954, it was sold under a different name, Kumadin. In 1955, it was used to treat President Dwight Eisenhower following a heart attack, which helped boost its popularity further. After all, if it was good enough for the most powerful man in the world, it was good enough for everyone else. Fast forward 50 years and other anticoagulant drugs have been developed, but warfarin is still used to treat millions of people. In fact, it remains on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines. And all of this down to a chance meeting between a dairy farmer and a determined biochemist. Conclusion. The rodenticides are widely used pest control substance. Its mechanism of action is the alteration of hemostasis, for which the manifestation and complication are secondary to breeding. In those patients with vitamin K depend coagulation disorders. They should be monitored for rodenticides poisoning in order to diagnose, treat early and prevent future complications. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Anna Brutlag, a veterinary toxicologist with Pet Poison Helpline and Safety Call International. Since rodenticides are some of the most common toxins ingested by dogs and cats, it's imperative to understand the medical implications when choosing or recommending a rodenticide. There are three primary categories of rodenticides on the consumer market. The first category are anticoagulants, or blood thinners. Anticoagulants cause death by interfering with the body's ability to clot its blood. Thankfully, if a pet ingests too much of an anticoagulant rodenticide, there is an effective antidote called vitamin K1. The second major active ingredient of rodenticides on the consumer market is bromethylene. Bromethylene is a neurotoxicant which can cause tremors, seizures, paralysis, and ultimately death in cats, dogs, and other mammals. If a lethal dose is ingested, we can see fatality in as quickly as one day following bromethylene ingestion. Unfortunately, unlike anticoagulant rodenticides, there is no easily available test or antidote for bromethylene poisoning. Due to the increased number of bromethylene products on the market over the past nine years, at Pet Poison Helpline, we've actually seen an 800% increase in the number of exposures of cats and dogs to bromethylene products. The final active ingredient that we're going to talk about is cholecalciferol. Cholecalciferol is also called vitamin D3, which may sound familiar to you because that's the same vitamin D that you and I take to maintain good health. Cholecalciferol is the new bait that Decon is bringing to market in 2018. It's formulated to be 
more toxic to rodents, especially when compared to anticoagulant rodenticide. And it's also effective against rodents which are resistant to anticoagulant rodenticides. It's imperative that we treat these cases quickly. Although while treatment is effective, we want to start treatment before permanent tissue damage occurs. DECON provides 24-7 access via phone to veterinary toxicology specialists.